Hey family, my name is Josiah and I'm one of the worship pastors here and for our 40 days of Jesus I get the opportunity to bring us into a, a deep dive into the worship portion. So we have spent the last couple of videos kind of going over how to prepare our hearts for time with Jesus, how to um, kind of an overview of, of what a time with Jesus would look like through the word, worship, and prayer. And today, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into worship in the secret place. Um, specifically, I wanna talk about why worship is important for us. Why is it so necessary for us to sing songs of praise to God? And I want to unpack what the Bible says about worship just a little bit and then take us into some practical application. Give us some time to really live it out, really do what we see in the Bible. So stick with me here and let's dive in. Did you know that in the Bible we are commanded to praise God with song over 45 times? Throughout the narrative of scripture there's a biblical undergirding of people meeting with God in song. You even see it in the throne room depicted in Revelation chapter 5. As John is beholding what's going on in front of him, they're singing praises. It says, they sing a new song unto the Lord. There is worship happening in the throne room that is singing. Worship connects us to the heart of the Father. And so when we spend time with Jesus, that is our goal. So no matter if we're diving into the word, if we're doing worship or we're praying, we're, we're connecting with the living God. But specifically, I want to jump into a little bit of how worship connects with the heart of the Father. You see in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, you see that God actually sings over his people. It says he sings with shouts of joy, songs of deliverance over his people. There is an element of singing that even God does. It's in him. And so we want to be like him in our singing. When we worship, not only are we being like God, not only are we aligning ourselves with what's happening in the throne room but we're also correcting our thoughts and our feelings how many times have you walked into a corporate worship environment just really not feeling it and then you get a couple songs in and you are so connected to God that's because worship is designed to do that we actually see in Psalm 73 how the psalmist is writing about everything that he's noticing going on around him. And he, he's really wrestling with, God, why would you allow evil people to prosper when, when I'm trying to be righteous and, and nothing is happening? But then there's a key verse where he says, but then I beheld you in the sanctuary and then I understood. That's the paraphrase. He, when he beholds the Lord, in the place of worship, his thinking changes and he sees things from God's perspective. So what worship can do for us is it can help us see things differently, see things from God's perspective, turn around our thoughts and our feelings onto him. Worship aligns our theology to the truths of scripture. How often have you walked out of a Sunday service, whether it's here at Antioch or maybe somewhere else, and you can't really remember what exactly the sermon was about, but you can remember, your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. There is, there is a distinct ability for our minds to catch on to music. And so actually, I mean, it is well documented that throughout church history, song was used to communicate theological truths. So not only does worship align our hearts with God and correct our thinking, but it, 
It also teaches us. It provides a place for us to learn the deep truths of Scripture. And lastly, worship opens up our, our spirit to meet with the living God. You see in Scripture, in Psalm 22, 3, it says that he inhabits, or another way to say that is dwells among or surrounded by the praises of Israel. The Lord is present when we worship. Because that's what's happening in heaven. And so when we are wanting to bring heaven to earth and we worship, what's happening is we are becoming aware of the presence of God that's around us. And so when we worship, we are aligning ourselves with the truth of God's word. We're encountering his heart for ourselves. We're correcting our thinking, our feeling. And we're getting ourselves ready to encounter the living God. Worship is so important in our times with Jesus because of these things. If nothing else, we know that whatever we give our attention, our affection, our time, our focus of our mind to, that's what we're going to start looking like, sounding like. That's what we're going to start behaving like. And so, if anything, we want to worship through song in order to behold the Lord, give Him glory, and meet Him in that place where it completely changes the way we think, completely changes the way we feel, and we're able to align with His thoughts. We're able to to begin looking like Him. And this worship, I want to be clear, it's not just singing songs. I think, I know I certainly have been guilty of this at times, but I think many of us can walk into church and maybe maybe you're not musically inclined or, or maybe you're just not feeling it that day or um, there could be a, a myriad of reasons, but you just kind of go through the motions of singing songs. And To be clear, worship is not just singing songs. Worship is active participation. Worship is active connection with the living God. Worship helps keep us focused on Him. And so that is our point in our times with Jesus, is worship helps us get focused in on God and helps us get into that place of being able to meet with him in a way that is life transforming worship is an active response to god did you know that there are seven different hebrew words for praise in the old testament there are seven different ways that the the hebrew language describes praising god we just translate it into praise or thanks or worship in English, but they, there's actually different words that mean different active responses to God. And today, I just want to kind of give an overview of that so you can see that throughout the Bible, there are actually different ways that we can respond to God, but most of them are active. I think that's that's one of my main points today is, is worship is an active response. Yes, there are some ways that we passively engage in worship, but but actually the Hebrew understanding by and large was an active response to God. And so I'm just going to go really quick over these seven words for Hebrew worship, and they'll be on the screen for you so you can see them yourself. The first one is yadah, and yadah is just to cast your hands into the air, to throw your hands up. It's a it's it's literally translated praise, but another, another word for it is to cast your hands or to cast outward. And so this is where we get the, the biblical undergirding for raising our hands in worship. The second word is todah. And todah is to confess, to give thanks, specifically thanking God for a blessing or a promise not yet received. 
how many of you have maybe been going through something hard and the song King of My Heart is either played at church or it comes on in your in your podcast or, or radio and you're like, well, you know, the song says you're never going to let me down, but I'm not sure I believe that right now. Well, actually, Toda is that Hebrew understanding of thanking God for something not yet seen, a promise not yet fulfilled. And so that's where we get that kind of phrase and where that phrase can be sung with confidence, even if you're not necessarily feeling it yourself. The next one is Shibach. And Shibach is loud adoration, shouts, triumph. This is where you see in scripture where the people of God, it'll describe them as, you know, it says um, in, in one of the Psalms, it says their mouths were filled with laughter, their tongues with joyful shouting. And they said, the Lord has done great things among us. That word is Shibach. And it, it means to shout praises to God. The next word is Beirach. And Beirach, is to bow down, to kneel down. It's translated as bless most often in scripture, but it's the, it's the posture of, it literally means to be broken in half. It's the posture of bowing, kneeling before the Lord in worship. The next word is zimer, and zimer is to play music on a, on a guitar or on an instrument. And so when you see the commandments in scripture of play a song to the Lord on the lyre or something like that, that is the word that's being used. The next word is tehillah. And tehillah is a spontaneous and corporate praise of God's glory and renown. And so maybe you've been in an Antioch service where one of our worship leaders will encourage you to sing your own song to the Lord. I know I will often do that. That is the, the Hebrew understanding of praise that is just welling up from within because of your thankfulness for what God has done for you. And then the last one is Hillel. And Hillel it kind of sounds like hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is the root word for hallelujah, and it just means to boast and to praise God. So these seven words, as you can see, to, to a large extent, all seven of them are active. Some of them may be a little bit more quiet or reserved, but it's all an active response to God. It's not meant to just be received. It's meant to be outward in expression. Worship is active connection with God. And so I would like us to... I would like to challenge us as you're meeting either in your life groups or, or maybe you're by yourself watching this. I would like to challenge us to step out. I would like to challenge us to, to implement some active worship in our times with the Lord. The infinite, all-powerful, all-loving God of the universe loves you. How could we not overflow with praise? How could we not? want to shout for joy, you know, as, as one of these words says, or how could we not want to just bow in reverence before him? These are right responses to God. And that was what the, the, the Hebrew culture understood about the relationship with Yahweh, is that it is a right response to be active in our worship, and we want to do the same. My hope is that we, we move individually and corporately into more active participation in worship. And I think it starts in the secret place. It starts here in our times with Jesus when nobody is watching anyways. This could take vulnerability or maybe it's something new to you. It takes some humility, maybe letting go of a little dignity as you bow down. But, but it's worth it, guys, because it connects us with God. It's an active way to even lead ourselves. You know, there's so many instances in scripture of the psalmist leading himself in worship, telling himself, soul, I will praise 
the Lord. He's commanding himself to praise. These are great active ways to do so. So we're going to take a little break here to spread out throughout your room if you're in life group or go ahead and stand up in your room if you're by yourself. And we're just going to do quick little activations in doing some of these active worship moments. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to do a couple different ways that we can engage with God practically in worship. Now, let me be clear. Worship doesn't have to look one certain way. I just, you know, maybe, I hope you didn't misunderstand me that you have to do all seven of these worship things to be right in your worship. I just want to give people tools and help us understand that worship is active. But no matter the way that you want to express yourself, my challenge today is to express yourself actively to God. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sing the doxology together. And when we sing the doxology together, I want us to raise our hands to God. The yada response to God. So wherever you're standing or if you're sitting by yourself, let's just do that right now together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Great. Now for this next one, we're going to do the, the Beirach response. And the Beirach response is that of kneeling, taking a knee before the Lord or bowing down before the Lord, of breaking the line of our body in a, in a submissive way so, so as to show the Lord reverence. So let's do that together wherever you're at right now. And let's just sing the doxology again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, Lord, we bow before you in reverence and in worship. We love you, God. In your name, amen. Great. Hope you guys are still with me. These are... Again, these are just examples of ways that you can actively respond to God. The third one that I want to do really quick is the Tehillah response to God, which is the singing of your own spontaneous song before the Lord. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a moment here, put on some instrumental music, and we're just going to encourage you in your own space to sing whatever's on your heart. You don't need to have a good voice. You don't need to be classically trained in singing. We just want to express ourselves with the overflow of thankfulness and worship to God. So let's do that now.
by singing our own songs, by overflowing with worship before you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, it's, impa- it's, it's not imperative that we implement every single one of these into our worship, but these are just some examples of great ways that you can engage actively with the Lord um, because worship is active, not passive, and we, that starts in the secret place. Other ways to respond to God could be maybe you want to doodle or draw in your journal as you worship I think any way where we are mimicking our creator in being creative can be worship unto God as we're singing, as we're praising. Um, And of course, thanking him for his promises, kind of like what we talked about earlier, playing your own instrument in your time with Jesus, that could be really helpful too if you are a musician. But whatever we do, we want to be people that actively engage with our creator in worship. Would you pray with me? Father, we recognize that worship is active connection and relationship expressed. That it starts in the secret place. That we want to be people that don't just go through the motions or just merely sing songs. But Lord, we want to be people that actively engage with you in worship. We love you, God. And we worship you in your name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me today. We'll see you guys next time.